Hey everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Jacques Green. As usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first sound that I have here is this bass line, which sounds like this. Pretty straightforward Jack Green style bass line. He's known for using like a lot of really nice analog synth kind of sounds. So I was just trying to make a nice sort of warm, yeah, analog sounding kind of bass line to sit underneath everything. So the way that I made the sound, I will show you the notes first. It's just playing this pretty simple kind of bouncy pattern. This is more of like a stabby kind of bass. In the sense that, like, you kind of have to keep playing notes. It's not like a longer re-space or something like that where it just could hold out forever. So, yeah, it's just playing, like, a simple kind of bouncy pattern that plays off in the drums. And then for the sound here, what I have is basically two oscillators inside of analog. So I have a saw wave and, or, yeah, a saw wave and a square wave and then a little bit of white noise as well. And those are going into a low-pass filter, which is set like this. So you can see, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, Got this little envelope on it, and that's what's giving it the kind of, like, stabbiness. You can hear the filter opening up there. So then after that, I have an amp envelope just set like this, just like a simple kind of plug. And yeah, that's it for analog. So then after that, all I really have here is just this compressor side chaining to the kick. This is a pretty simple bass. I know, this is strange. If you're familiar with my other tutorials, you know I usually do a lot more with effects, but really to get this kind of sound, it's more about just getting a nice sound out of the synth and doing everything you can to preserve that, which in this case was just, yeah, doing nothing. I mean, it sounded pretty good coming out of analog. So yeah, so then the next thing that we have here is this little lead, which sounds like this. So this was also made with analog, and this is just playing like, yeah, this kind of simple like arpeggio sort of pattern in the key of the track, which is, I believe, yeah, we're in F major. So it's just playing this simple kind of minor sounding arpeggio in F major. Or I suppose it's more like melancholic. But yeah, so then for the sound on this one, like I said, I made it with analog. So we have one saw wave going into a low-pass filter, which has a very similar envelope, actually, to the bass. Just that same kind of, like, plucky attack envelope. And then the amp envelope is set very similarly. And then finally, inside of analog here, I have a bit of vibrato. So you can see I have the amount at 41%. The rate is, like, kind of in the middle. And that's what gives it that kind of drift. Like when you hear that, like how it kind of drifts in pitch there. If I turn this off, it doesn't quite have that. So this just sort of helps to bring it to life and give it, again, more of that like analog synth kind of feel. So then after that, I have a bit of ping pong delay. I just have it on the eighth notes there. Um, and the reason for that, actually, I can explain. It's because this is playing a pattern which is mostly focused around 16th notes. Like the way it's sort of bouncing around, you have like, that and that and like you know all of that so i wanted to give it a delay time that would just kind of fit that a little bit better as opposed to just sort of fall in line with it like if i did like 16 notes or if i did this three here i still don't know exactly what count that is but like if i did one of those it would be just sort of blending in with the pattern as opposed to adding like a nice kind of rhythm to it so that's why i have that on eighth notes and yeah then after that i have a bit of reverb and then finally, I just have a compressor side chaining into the kick, and then I have an EQ8 cutting out the low end. You can hear there's a bit of low end there, and the thing is, this bass, because it's so warm and round sounding and analog, it's not only in the low end, I'll show you with a spectrum, it's not only in the low end, it's also kind of in that like low mid range. Like, yeah, you can see, it's mostly happening around, like, here. And so, usually a lead would be, like, around here, and then also a little bit there. So, I just cut that out on this. And you can hear they fit together pretty well. So then, the next thing I have here is this little synth pluck, which sounds like this. So this is just playing a simple kind of like arpeggio style pattern as well. This one's a lot more rhythmic. It's kind of supposed to play off of the kick. And it helps to accentuate the groove. If I turn it off and just play the whole track, it really doesn't have as much groove as when you have this little... 
think it kind of makes you bob your head a little bit more. So yeah, so then the way that I made the sound was with operator, basically we just have a square three wave. So if you don't know an operator, all these different waveforms, like these square three, four, six, eight, sixteen, and same with the saw, what they are is they're essentially a square wave or a saw wave with some of the harmonics removed. And then whichever number you choose is sort of like the lower the number is, the less harmonics it's going to have. Meaning it's going to be less square wavy and saw wavy and more sine wavy. So I chose here the square three, so it has a little tiny bit of that square wave in it still, but it's mostly going to be more like a sine wave. Um, so yeah, so I have that, and then that's going into this low pass filter here, which just has an envelope on it. Pretty simple for like a flat kind of sound. And then the only other things I have in here are I have this LFO, um, which is set like this, so I have the rate pretty fast. It's on the pitch. And then I have the amount at like 7%, so very low. And it's just adding that tiny bit of kind of like pitch <laughs> stuff you hear, like vibrato. If I turn this off, you can hear it's a lot more straightforward. And then when I turn it back on, there we go. We get that little pitch wobble. And then the only other thing I have in there is this pitch envelope, which is just giving it that little kind of like attack at the beginning of the sound. It's what makes it more percussive. I turn it off. Yeah, you can hear that. So then after that, I have a bit of overdrive. And this is kind of where the sound happens, really. If I turn the overdrive off, you can hear it. it's about kind of getting like that almost sine wavy, like not super harmonically rich sound. Um, and then just taking it into, pardon my uh, expression, but overdrive with the distortion. Like just kind of like, yeah, really taking it over the edge there. So that's how I made that. And then after that, I just have a bit of reverb and for some space. And then I have a compressor side sending it to the kick. So yeah, pretty straightforward there. So the next thing I'm going to show you here are the kicks, which sound like this. So the reason why I say kicks is because it's two layers. I have a sort of like a top kick and then like a sub kick. So the top kick is just like a pretty simple sample. It's this one that I've heard in a lot of Jack Green's tracks, actually. It comes from an old drum machine. And yeah, it's just got that nice punch. But then if you want to sort of modernize it a little bit, what you have to do is layer a sub kick under it. So what I did was I got this one. Um, yeah, it's just like a pretty powerful 808 kind of kick that's really just happening in the low end. And what I did was I shortened it and then used the fade a little bit to kind of like shape that. And then I used this low pass filter to get rid of the high end because obviously this kick, we really just want that for the high end. Like especially if you look on the EQ, yeah, you can see there's a bump around the high end. That's what we want out of this kick. So I just low passed the second one to make room for that. And then vice versa, I high passed the first kick to kind of get rid of some of that low end. I didn't get rid of all of it. You can see I still left a bit in there. Because if you just get rid of all of it, they don't really blend that well. You can just like really clearly hear the difference between them. So yeah, I was just trying to blend them as opposed to like really you know cut out the different spots with that one but yeah so this is a pretty simple kick like i said it's just a matter of getting this cool one and then adding a bit of low end under it and also when you split it like this it just gives you more control overall like there's a lot more stuff you can do when you have your kick split up into the low end and the high end so yeah so then the next thing i have here are the hi-hats which sound like this so what we have is basically sort of like an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat you can hear close hi-hat and then the open one. So the way that I made the open hi-hat was with two layers. One, I have this operator little hi-hat sound that I made. And then I have the shaker on top of it. Which is, as you can hear, very small. You probably couldn't tell that when you just hear the sound that it's there. But that's fine. The purpose of this one is to add high-end. If I play you this operator, this one here, um, and I'll show you on the spectrum as well. So you can see we have a nice kind of like hi-hat. Like it's in the range we would want it to be. But you can see when it gets to the end here, like this really high stuff, it just goes away. Like there's nothing there. And it's because of the way that I made this, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But to combat that, I just have this shaker. Which as you can see has a bit more stuff going on there. It's kind of hard to get a sound 
that's just like perfect in the high end like that. But this one has a bit more of that kind of high, high end. So yeah, it just adds that on there. Again, this isn't about having two layers that you can really hear the difference between. It's more just about sort of combining two things and getting the best of each. Um, so then, like I said, for the operator I had, what I did was, it's really simple actually, it's just some white noise with an envelope like this. So kind of more of an open hi-hat kind of envelope. And then I have that going into a bandpass filter, which is just set like this. No envelope on that or anything. And yeah, like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, this is a nice way to make a hi-hat and operator. It's actually how I made the closed hi-hat as well, you can see. It's basically the same, honestly. The only difference really is, I think, where the filter, n yeah, the filter frequency is like slightly higher on the open one or on the closed one. And then also, it's more about the amp envelope with the difference between the closed hi-hats and the open hi-hats. So as you can see, on the amp envelope, it's a lot tighter. And then on the open one, yeah, it's a little bit looser. Um, so yeah, so those are the hi-hats. And then the last thing I'll show you here is sort of like the percussion stuff. So all together, it sounds like this. So what we have here are three layers. We have this clap, this little shaker thing, and then this, like, I call it a plonk. I guess it's just kind of like a little, like, tom or clave or something like that. But basically, yeah, so I'll show you the clap and the shaker first. So these two kind of go together. If you listen, you can see that the way, or you can hear, that the way that they're programmed is sort of like the shaker hits on the same hit as this clap here, but then on the next one, it does almost like that sort of like future garage burial style pattern where it does it on the 16th note before the four. So yeah, this just kind of makes a cool groove for the clap. And again, it's just like adding to the overall sort of like groove of the track. If I play it with, you can hear it pretty pronounced, even though it's in the background, if you listen for it, you can really hear it because yeah, it's pretty pronounced. But if I turn it off, This just feels a lot more bland. Like, this is a really nice way to add some just extra stuff to your clap and to your percussion. And this is something I've heard in a lot of Jacques Green's tracks as well. He's really good at doing stuff like this to sort of add little extra things when the groove needs it. Um, so, yeah, so all that that is is it's basically just a little shaker sample. Um, sounds like this. I guess it could be a shaker or percussion. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, so I put that in a simpler, and then I just added a bandpass filter to it. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted it to be like kind of small. I didn't want it to take up a lot of, you know, space in the frequency spectrum. And what better way to do that than with a bandpass filter, especially on the 24 dB per octave of attenuation setting, where, yeah, it's like literally just carving out a certain range in the frequency spectrum for the sound. Um, and then for the clap, it's pretty simple. It's just like this kind of nice organic hand clap style sound. And then I put a little bit of reverb on it just to give it some space and kind of yeah, make it fit more in the mix. So the last thing that we have here for this percussion, like I said, is this little plonk slash clave slash tom, whatever you want to call it, a wood block. Basically, all this is is just this little short kind of like percussion sound. Um, I put it in a simpler, and I think I played it, yeah, I played it pretty high. So C would be the root, C3 would be the root note. So I played it almost an octave higher at A sharp 3. Um, I guess that's just where it sounded cool. And then, yeah, all I added to that was just a little bit of ping pong delay. Just to give it some space. If I turn it off. I don't know, it just feels a little weird. Like, for some reason, the mood that this, like, chord progression and these synths and this melody giving me, it's like this very spacey, kind of, like, atmospheric mood. So, that's kind of why I have, like, a lot of delay and reverb on the percussion and stuff here. Just to sort of fit it more into that that I was getting from the vibe of the synths. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. I just wanted to show you guys some cool Jacques Green uh, techniques. I've got a bunch of requests for this one, so I figured, you know, what better time than now. And yeah, um, so make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. My social media is on the screen right now as well if you want to check that out. Thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.